Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Welcome back to the wizarding world of Harry Potter, except about 70 years before Harry was born. It's the Roaring Twenties, and the dark wizard of the day is Grindelwald. He's been wrecking havoc over in Europe, but in America, things are pretty cool. Meet Newt Scamander. He's a nice British lad crossing the pond with his trunk full of magical creatures. He's an awkward kind of guy, gets along better with animals than with people. Unfortunately, it's a bad time for him to come to New York with a suitcase full of magical creatures because some mysterious magical beast has been wrecking havoc on the city. One of Newt's animals gets out and wrecks some minor havoc of its own. It's a platypus mole that likes shiny things, so Newt has to chase him into a bank. Inside, he meets Jacob Kowalski, a nomad, which is what they call muggles in America. He's here to get a loan to open a bakery, but Newt has no time for small talk. He's got to chase his platypus mole. Unfortunately, Newt drops an egg, so Jacob's like, oh, I guess I'll take this for now. He goes to the loan meeting. Hey, I've got a great idea. I'm going to make donuts and we can dunk them in coffee. Dunk Dunking donuts? That's a terrible idea. Loan rejected. When he gets out, the egg starts to hatch, so Newt's like, come on over here, buddy, and boom, they hatch some sort of chicken snake together. Long story short, Newt gets the platypus mole back and warps them out of there. He's like, old still, mate, I'm gonna just erase your memory then. But Jacob's like, I don't think so, and he runs away. So as Newt's leaving, there's a girl coming down, and they're both so awkward, they won't make eye contact, and their awkwardness explodes. Oh, nah, she's a witch too, and she warps them out of there. She's like, my name's Tina. I'm with the magical NYPD. You're under arrest for a magical creature habit. So she brings him in to see her boss, super sexy Colin Farrell. Luckily, he and Jacob accidentally switch suitcases, so Newt's free to go, but Jacob is having a rough time back home and a bunch of the magical beasts escape. Newt and Tina get over there and put the koosh-ball pig back, but Jake got bit, so they take him back to her place for observation, where she's got a hot younger sister, Queenie, and it is love at first sight. That night, Newt goes down into his suitcase, and he's got a whole bunch of magical creatures there. There's the boulder beetles and Cthulhu horse, there's birdie snakes and leafy green stick men, but most special of all is the thunder chicken. That's why Newt came to America. He rescued this guy from poachers or whatever and is trying to put him back in his native land of Arizona. But first Newt has to sneak out to find all his missing creatures. One of them is a giant hippo rhino who's in heat, so Newt has to do a crazy mating dance to lure it back in. Unfortunately, Jacob got the musk on him and turns into a whole chase scene, but in the end, Newt gets him back. Meanwhile, this super annoying chick leads the new Salem Anti-Magic League. She's got this creepy looking son who's been meeting secretly with sexy Colin Farrell. See, she runs a little orphanage and Colin Farrell thinks that one of them is secretly a wizard. He wants to know which one and in exchange he promises to teach this kid magic, which he really wants because his mom beats him and generally sucks. One day she takes the whole family to see Newspaper Guy in order to print an anti-magic story, but they kick him out of there and his son in particular is super mean to them. Newspaper Son is actually a New York senator and that night, boom, Shadow Monster busts in there. Oh, and it kills him. Meanwhile, the girls realize Newt is gone, so Tina goes and grabs him. She brings him in for the misdemeanor of magical creatures on the loose, not realizing that a New York senator was just killed by one. So they're all very much under arrest. Newt's like, oi, mate, my creatures aren't dangerous. None of them could have done that. But sexy Colin Farrell's like, uh, what about this creepy shadow blob? Yeah, that could have done it. That creature is an obscurus. It's a shadow monster created when a young wizard represses their magic, so it bursts out in this form. This one's harmless though, because unfortunately its child died, but Newt managed to trap it and is studying it. Sexy Colin Farrell doesn't believe him though. He thinks they're working with Grindelwald, and apparently he has the power to sentence them to death. No trial needed. For the death penalty in Magical America, they pull out your fond memories and throw them in the euthanasia pool, so you want to jump in. Luckily, Newt has a leafy stick man on him to pick the lock, and he's also got a quarter machine elastic sticky ball, which transforms into a kite bird and saves the day. They break the spell, but Tina's trapped, so he pulls an Aladdin do you trust Trust me, and she jumps on the magic carpet, they're saved, and they find Sister and Jacob, and they're out of there. They gotta track down the rest of Newt's missing animals to clear their names, so they go to a speakeasy and talk to Goblin McGangster Face. He tells them about some invisible creature living in Macy's. Turns out it's Newt's shaggy E.T. monkey, and also a giant bird snake. This thing grows to fit its container, so they find a little teapot and a roach. Roach in the teapot, boom, bird snake goes in there, nice and small now. And all the magical creatures are home safe. Now, creepy lady, He's got a daughter who was playing with a fake wand, so it's time for a beating. But oh, the belt out of her hand? What little girl's a witch? And oh, the Obscurious attacks and kills Creepy Lady. So Creepy Kid tells Sexy Colin the witch is probably his little sister, and Colin Farrell betrays him. I was never going to teach you magic, loser. But when Colin Farrell finds the sister, surprise twist, the brother was the wizard all along, and he's the Obscurious. Now he's mad and he's unleashed upon New York. Surprise, Colin Farrell's the bad guy. He wants to use the Obscurious for 
for his own ends, so Tina comes in to distract him while Newt goes and tries to talk the kid down. They fly down into the subway, and Obscurus is going crazy. Eventually, Tina manages to calm him down a bit, but then all the other magic cops show up and decide to shoot first and ask questions later. So boom, the Obscurus is dead, and unfortunately, they killed that kid with it. They're like, hey, it's a tragedy, but we had to do it to keep the Wizarding World a secret. But Colin Farrell's like, maybe we shouldn't keep it a secret. We should rise up and conquer the Muggles. Uh, what? So they start fighting, but he's way stronger than any of them. But he's not stronger than Sticky Ball Kite Bird manages to tie him up. And turns out he's not just working with Grindelwald, he is Grindelwald! And he's not just Colin Farrell, he's Johnny Depp! I'm the dude playing the dude, pretending to be the other dude. So Grindelwald's going to jail, you can bet he's breaking out for the sequel though. And unfortunately the muggles saw everything, so there's no way to erase that many memories. But wait, Newt's got an idea, it's time for the Thunder Chicken! He's got a vial of forgetty juice, and Thunder Chicken can make it rain, so it's amnesia rain. All the muggles like, wait, what are we doing here? So the whole event is covered up, and the day is saved. Not by a powerful wizard, but by an awkward kid with a trunk full of weird animals. Unfortunately, poor Jacob's got to wipe his memory too, but not before he gets a kiss with Goldie. And what about Newt and Tina? Have they had a romance arc? To be honest, not really. They're probably better off as friends. And Newt still carries the picture of his ex-girlfriend, Lita Lestrange, relative of the evil Bellatrix. Lestrange from the originals. Will this come up in the sequel? Probably. But the moment feels right, so Newt decides to go for an awkward Casablanca, here's looking at you, kid. You know, at least two are both so awkward, maybe they should be together. And before he leaves, Newt bumps into Jacob, gives him a bunch of silver eggs so he can start his bakery. He ditches the Dunkin' Donuts idea, though, makes fantastical beast pastries instead. But one day Goldie stops by, and it's love at second sight, and that's how Fantastic Beasts comes to an end. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.